Hey growers and operators, it's Nate here. So today we're deep diving into a pretty game-changing technology that has the potential to change the way that we analyze cannabis, in specific cannabinoids and terpenes. So imagine that you can analyze these cannabinoid and terpene profiles with super high accuracy in less than a minute. Now it's possible thanks to this near-infrared spectrometer technology. So while some of you might have caught whispers of this like innovative device or a, have a basic grasp on it, there's still a lot of people in the dark. So today we decided it's high time we shine some light on the Valenbaris near-infrared portable lab. So whether you're familiar or hearing about it for the first time, this video will give you an overview on its impressive capabilities and how this device can save money and time in operation. So why don't we get started? Jason, first off, why don't you give an introduction of who you are? Thanks, Nate. Uh, been in the cannabis industry for a decade now and came across some friends who are really passionate in Spain that brought me on to the Neo Spectro from Cyware to do my cannabis testing inside my grows without having to deal with the lab and all the associated stuff that comes with that. Yeah, so you have been uh, director of cultivation for multi-state operators, large commercial growing operations, single state operators, you have a nursery. Um, you've seen a lot of different um, ways of cultivating cannabis, form factors of cannabis, and you've been pheno hunting and basically trying to make the best forms and genetics and phenos of cannabis that you possibly can. So what originally attracted you to this machine? Yeah, so I mean, for me, it's like over the past decade, we've been growing, kind of going with our gut, trying to make decisions without data necessarily on which plant is going to be the very best to bring to customers and to help the grows that we work for. With the Neo Spectra, we've been able to just open the floodgates with data and now we can know exactly what we're getting for potency and terpenes across every plant in our grow. Where a pheno hunt before, it would cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars to test thousands of seeds to understand which one is the unicorn. Now I can do that in-house and it's really exciting because it's, it's something I've had to do just going off my gut and using other physical characteristics of the plant. And now I have something that's really just founded in data where I can make an analytical decision about this is the most potent plant or this is the terpene family that I'm missing in my menu. Got it. Yeah, because I mean, I've, you know, I do think in pheno hunting uh, and trying to get the best genetics out of maybe popping seeds, there is a lot of like a, a touch, feel, kind of personal um, relationship that you might have. You might bring like 10 friends together, smoke it all, see which one you like. Um, that's kind of on the, you know, I would say the old school way or, you know, I think there's still a lot of value to that actually. So maybe old school is not the best term, but um, on the other end, the analytical side, it's like sending it into a lab or you have to invest in equipment, kind of like this thing behind me, which is HPLC or a GCMS. So high pressure liquid chromatography or um, gas chromatography, mass spectrom spectrometry. I can like barely say the acronym. Yeah, but I know these machines are like, maybe 40 grand at the low end if you can find one that's like maybe partially used but then you have to buy reagents and you probably have to have an on-site like technician or chemist who can use it um, but i've heard people spending two or three hundred grand on the machine alone plus maybe a hundred two hundred thousand dollars a year operationally to use it oh absolutely in in my days in corporate cannabis we were looking at budgets of up to half a million dollars to suit out a lab with everything you need to go along with the machine. You know, there's a lot of glass, reagents, and a chemist mm -hmm. that comes along to get these results real time inside your grow. So we can skip all of that now. The amazing thing is that the Neo Spectra unit, they modeled this after the very best labs that have an ISO certification of a 17025 in cannabis, which means they're using a pristine procedure to get consistent, accurate results, no matter, no matter where you're at in the world and what lab you're in. And those results have been transposed into this unit. So you have an ISO 17025 lab inside your, your home grow or inside your small or family size business. Yeah. And I mean, look, we talking about this thing and it sounds like, you know, God's gift to the earth and like cannabis creators, like let's talk about limitations too. Like, cause look, HPLC machine, like 
it's not totally displacing those because these machines are super accurate when used properly. Problem is sometimes they're not used properly just because there's human error and maybe the way the sample is run or, you know, I think if you're a cannabis operator out there, maybe you've sent a sample out to like three different labs, gotten three wildly different test results. Um, I guess one thing that they should check is, is that an ISO 17025 lab because they have specific protocols they have to run. So all of those tests, um, I think in the, uh, research that the Valen Bears team has did, they found that all the ISO labs have very strict guidelines they follow. And when they measure samples, they're seeing that their cannabinoid and terpene results come back way more similar and in line with one another versus non ISO labs, which are like, can be a lot more wildly different. So the limitations of this unit are, it's not gonna get to the super, super small trace things. Like you're not gonna be able to find anything under 250 PPMs on your product. So what we're really focusing on is what the industry needs is cannabinoid contents, looking at our CBGs, CBDs, THCs, active and inactive, and also the terpene families and how they correlate to each other, which could make up anything from 1% to 6% of your plant, looking at all the terpenes. Right now, we're focusing on terpenes that are found in 80% of the cannabis market. Now, we can't really get away from the traditional gas and liquid chromatography because it plays an important role of modeling the outlayers and the, the new cannabis that comes in so that we have a model that this machine can find. Now, luckily, the team of Alan Veris is running thousands of samples a week and they're uploading that to the software cloud. So as cannabis develops and new technologies and solutions come out, you're future proof with your hardware. It's just a minor update to the cloud and you're back on track with the latest mm -hmm. samples that are out there. Got it. So it's August, 2023, um, this unit and the software has just come out. Let's talk about what it's measuring right now. Yeah, so right now the unit and it's worst case it'll ever be is doing your total THC, your THCA, your CBD, your CBDA, your CBG, and your total terpene percentage. Some of those 80 terpenes that could be found in the plant are in trace amounts. So what the unit is doing is looking at the total percentage and giving you a relationship between the entire terpene family. Mm -hmm. So you can understand which ones are your dominant, which ones are your top three, and how they correlate to each other as a total group. Got it. So if someone using this, let's actually talk about like, who this unit is made for and like where it adds value to someone because this thing costs like $13,000, which we understand is not cheap. But I guess when we're looking at the alternative, you could be talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. So let's talk about to who this makes sense for and maybe who it doesn't make sense for. Sure. So this unit um, is going to be a great asset to anyone who's curious about data. They're in the, the, the traffic of lots of cannabis product, but they don't have the time or the, the money to run everything they see through a sophisticated high-performing lab. Um, so they're either going to go off COAs and we don't know how far apart that was from the date of the product when they got it, or also they're just going to go off of trust or, or no data at all, just a visual inspection. So I think that brokers, um, breeders and cannabis consumers alike, if they really want to know what they have in the present day, this test isn't going to destroy their sample, but they're going to be able to get accurate results real time for that day. So it might also be very beneficial to people that are R&D processes to say, how is our packaging doing after a year? They can open up that product, test it on the day, put it away, bring it back out in a year. And the exact same product that went through the test the first time, now we can see the results of whatever we're trying to research as far as making a new product or seeing how the cannabis um, can hold up to packaging as well as phenol on it. Yeah, no, let's actually talk about some of those. That's interesting. That's something I didn't think about. So like, yeah, let's say you put something in its packaging, or let's actually say you're trying out five different forms of packaging, some with, you know, humidity, maybe stabilizers, some without, put five units in packaging, test it every month for multiple months and see like which ones stay, you know, um, with the strongest cannabinoid and terpene profile, and which ones degrade more or, Maybe if you have a curing room, you want to take a specific cultivar and like measure it once every three days and see when you have like the peak performance for curing. 
before it starts to degrade again. And then you wanted to go do it. Absolutely. And, and that kind of thinking gets yeah. us into the trap of sample size. And when we want to do these things, we want as many samples as possible to make a, a, a really good conclusion. And that's where labs get so expensive. And a lot of these great ideas, they have to go off a couple samples and, and that's it. But now we can do five different kinds. We can do hundreds of tests. We could pop thousands of seeds for a pheno hunt and get accurate results across a very large sample size. Yeah. You know, I mean, the whole breeding nursery pheno hunting game, I mean, like, it's funny because it's like one of those tasks that like never ends. Like your job is never finished because there's market fatigue. Like, look, man, you could like be smoking, you know, Mac one and loving it. And then all of a sudden, six months later, you're like, man, I'm kind of bored of this. I need something new. And uh, you know, you're constantly probably wanting to say, okay, how do I like, basically when you're pheno hunting, you're kind of like playing God where you're like, I want to change the genetics of this plant and go this way. I want to take a right, I want to take a left. This is, I could see growing a plant out even, um, not only pheno hunting, but let's say you're getting close to week eight, pulling nugs off, you know, every few days to figure out when it's peaking in its cannabinoid and terpene profile and then when it's declining. But you can kind of play God faster, right? Well, you can take a harder left or a harder right kind of thing. Absolutely. It's kind of like now you can, you've unlocked unlimited testing. So it's wherever your mind takes you. You could be testing from different um, areas of the plant. You could be trying different lights, different nutrients, and you could be testing every day like a small, it only takes about a half gram to a gram to get a good read. And you're not destroying that product if you want to go do further testing with it. But now you can do so much more R&D in your grow and really understand the data behind your decisions with your nutrients, light, placements of plants, and the phenotypes you choose uh, within your, your crop. Okay, so here's the actual handheld unit, not that big of a unit, but it also basically connects to your phone. So you don't need Wi-Fi or anything, but it uses Bluetooth, right? Let's talk about how you interface with this product. Yeah, so it's really simple and familiar to a lot of people with cell phones. I use an iPhone. It works on Android as well as on a desktop if you prefer. Um, but you just turn the unit on and connect via Bluetooth through your Neospectra app on your phone. Um, you don't have to pay for the app, but the software inside of it, which is included with the purchase, um, unlocks all of the cannabis testing features, how to calibrate the unit, as well as how to export that to PDFs, um, CSV files, or to a printer through an API to actually print labels of your tests. So it's pretty exciting. Got it. So like, you, you there's like a database where it stores all of your tests so that, you know, it's not like it just, okay, here's a reading and then it disappears. You can actually like log it save it for future use and like going back to your data? Absolutely, it's all saved with geolocation. If you're on a really big farm or you have multiple locations across the country, you're gonna have that tied to the sample as well. This is all saved in a cloud. So you don't have to worry about if your, your test is gonna be there a year from now. Got That's it. all stored away. So people with like multiple growing operations, if there's like a UI on your computer that you can interface with, you could have multiple team members maybe interacting with the UI, like someone could test it and then maybe a manager in a different state could take a look and be like, oh, this is what they're testing over at, you know, grow A in sector C or something. Absolutely, you can look in real time once the results are up. If, if you have an internet connection, they're gonna go to the server. If not, they're gonna hold until they get to an internet connection. Um, as well is there's a QR code function. So if you want to keep your labeling and all your samples in order, you can have a QR sticker on the, on the bag of the sample. Just wave the camera of the phone across that and it's going to input all that stuff into your spreadsheets and tables for each sample you take to save a lot of data entry. Got it. So let's talk about like, you know, probably one of the coolest things that I like about this is you guys have been saying that it's going to have software updates to make it both more accurate and test for more things, like even more cannabinoids, more terpenes, but also test more form factors. So like one thing we were just touching base on for a second, which is totally not out. And like you guys said, we're not gonna launch something unless it's, you know, you know, it's, it's gonna be really useful and pretty accurate, but like, dude, testing for male or female plants at a young age, 
You guys are even toying around with that a little bit? Absolutely. So what we're doing in the background is you're using this to test and, and use it for terpenes and for cannabinoids. We're in the background running thousands of tests to upload through the software to figure out new things like how much THC is in an edible or is candy even have THC in it uh, along with uh, soil samples. What's your macro and micronutrients in the soil of the plant? And the nice thing about all of that is it's the same hardware. We're just doing a software update. Like one of the really cool things we were trying to do in development was figure out if a plant was male, female, or, or self-seeding and had, had both. And we realized that we could get it to a 65% confidence level and we were right that much of the time, but we only want to release products that are very high in confidence to give you the same kind of reliability you're seeing with traditional testing like chromatography. Got it. So you think that model uh, will like develop over time, become more accurate, or is that just a limitation? I think with like every type of innovative product, you know, we started with massive bulky TVs and now we all have cell phones in our pocket. NIR is, is like AI. It's in the worst state right now. It's only going to get better and it's going to get better exponentially. Mm. This unit is way ahead of its software. So we're going to see a lot of software updates to this current model. Yeah, that's going to be sick. So basically, what you do is you buy the unit, it comes with software, and then you pay an annual software fee, as I understand it, which is about 2,800 bucks, right? right? And then you keep getting every new update that the software develops. Yeah, and we've tried to keep our costs low, and what that money's doing, you're contributing to thousands of tests being run to improve the software, to find new innovations, and also so all the data is stored in a cloud, so that way you don't lose your results. So let's actually chat about you know, really using the machine? Like what kind of steps does someone need to go through? What are the do's and don'ts and how do you actually test product? Sure, well, you wanna make sure all your stuff is charged up. That's not too hard to do. Um, once you've done that, you just wanna make sure that you keep the lenses clean. This is just like you would a high-end camera or anything else. You've got this uh, lens right here. We include all kinds of brushes. Then you have your dishes that you're gonna put your sample into. We calibrate our unit every time. The calibration process is really simple. It's just a clean white background for the camera inside the NIR to get a grip on its surroundings, like the humidity, the ambient lighting, um, the temperature, all affects the testing because it is so sensitive what we're doing. So we do our calibration, takes a couple seconds. We have our sample prepped. You wanna be consistent in the way you do your testing. If you are testing flour, there's a difference between the top bud and the bottom bud of a plant. Um, you wanna have a, a large enough sample to run multiple tests if you're worried about consistency or wanna send them off to third-party labs. Um, you wanna grind it up in a homogenous way. I like to pick out the large bulky stems. Whatever you do, just be consistent in the way you test. Grind it to a nice fine, um, just like you would a pre-roll, and then get that in your dish, put it on. Once you're hooked up to your phone via Bluetooth, it's gonna ask you to scan your test. So it's gonna make six passes on the same sample. So you're looking at like 5,000, almost 6,000 screenshots of that sample. And then it's taking all those and running through an AI algorithm which is different than spectrometry. It's one test, and we're trying to come up with the results off that one test. Dope, Jason. I mean, this unit's rad. Uh, I know that we're gonna be carrying it around our Canicribs consulting team and going to um, do field tests with people, and we'll be selling it on growershouse.com. Uh, we're excited about seeing what this thing does in the market. Yeah, me too. I'm excited to see what all the data is gonna bring to growers all across the country. Hey. My name is Jorge Cervantes. I wrote a book. Uh, this book, actually, I've written about 50 of them, but you might know me by this book, uh, Marijuana Horticulture. It sold over a million copies. And then here's my most recent book, Cannabis Encyclopedia. You can find it for free in Spanish and English on my website, marijuanagrowing.com. Hey, I'll tell you, I got a hold of this uh, Neospectra. It's so great. It analyzes the THC. THCA, CBD, CBG, and 10 different terpenes all in about a minute. And it hooks up to your phone right here. You know, I mean, it's, it's so cool. You can take it into the grow room. It just keeps working, you know. But what you can do is you can make phenohunts with this baby. And 
figure out exactly what you've got. And the, 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 the cool thing is, it's got the, it, it records the terpene profile as well. And it's incredibly accurate. That's, that's the whole deal. It's like uh, super accurate for, and, and it's a whole new type of technology. You gotta have one, gotta have one.